It's absolutely chucking it down in Manchester. However, I don't care because I am in heaven. This is Every Trade Behind the Build, episode 53. So welcome to the yard. It looks like you guys are loving the yard content. And what's good is that I'm spending a lot of my time down here. Two reasons. A, I want to supervise the build of the new extended yard, but also I just love it. We're adding more machinery. It's a loading shovel there now, which is what we desperately needed. Again, we've done a deal with the landlord of the other parcel of land that we've uh, taken ownership of or taken lease of, and they're also letting us have access to that, which is amazing. What it means is we could be so much more efficient. So down here at the moment, we've got Dale, we've got the two grab drivers that could also drive machines as well. We've got the dig, we've We've got another guy in now, another operator that's helping us clear that pile. We've got Cousin Alex who's helping and somebody else. So it is a full busy yard. So what I thought I'd do was spend the majority of this episode showing you around what's happening because the yard's working and earning its money as well as trying to get the build going as well and show you a little bit more in depth of what we do here and what we're hoping to do here. And it's absolutely chucking it down. And I've got my shorts on, but come on, let's have a look. So, what I should say is that Hollywood is back behind the camera, which I am so glad about. We're going to keep doing the intimate stuff because it is actually sort of striking a chord with a lot of you guys. And it's nice because it means I can be a bit more spontaneous. Hope you can hear me by the, well, oh, by the way. But it's a bit more spontaneous, which I like and it captures more real moments. But yeah, look, we have got tons and tons of our screen topsoil and now we've got a 10 mil screener a screen gone in so the quality of the product's amazing i've done a flash sale i'm selling it for eight pound a ton if you come and collect it yeah which is basically the idea of that is we just need to get rid of what we've got because we've got so much more to come the issue is we haven't got an existing customer base we're building this side from scratch and we've done quite well in the time that we've had but i haven't got enough customers there waiting to literally be selling it out so i've got a bad feeling we are going to be sat on quite a bit of product for a while which is okay but it's not great with soil because with weather like this it's not great for the soil so if you're in manchester or cheshire and you need some low cost screened topsoil recycled get in touch but yeah it's amazing so what we've got at the moment is dale loading heaving up the pile this is the stuff that's already been pre-screened with the big screener that i showed you on sunday's episode that is then by dave on the 14 tonner one of our 14 tonners is going into the trommel we're just organized at the moment but we have to move really fast because the piles just pile up but come round have a look So literally this is piling up to the top of the conveyor within five minutes. I reckon we must be doing 15 tonnes in about 20 minutes. I don't know, more. It's, I don't actually, I think, don't, I think it says it can do 30 tonnes an hour, but we're definitely getting more of that because it's been pre-screened. But it's great, it's really good quality. We've just sold a bit whilst I've come here a minute ago to a landscape, we had a couple of tonnes, and he said it's absolutely bang on. Just gritty enough to make it perfect for turfing, so. Yeah, we need to get rid of this fast. But because we're pre-screening on the big screener, on the K4, it's just going through our trommel and our screener so much easier. So yeah, it's amazing. So here, what we've got is basically really clean, hardcore that's come off the K4 screener. So again, 
it's already screened a lot of the bad stuff, a lot of the soils out already. So when it goes through the crusher, the product it's turning out is brilliant. And what we've done is we've done a, a deal with a utility company and they're gonna buy 40 tonnes a day off us. Off of, they've got a contract that's lasting five years. So that's amazing. We're giving them a reduced rate, but basically that will pay for the yard, just that 40 tonne alone. My worry is our crusher, the rubble crusher, might not be able to keep up. We've been working it really hard and we're getting 15 to 20 tonnes an hour out of it, which is great because we're then within two hours, we'll fulfil their order, but really we need to be going through a greater quantity. So I'm definitely going to need to think about getting a bigger crusher if this takes off how we want it to. But honestly, it's like a factory outdoors. Everyone knows what they're doing. The dig's got everyone doing what they need to do. If you look, there's machines working everywhere. We're even having to use our free tonner because every other machine is in use. This is what we've been working towards for ages, having all the right amount of machines, the right people, the space, all ready for when it finally got going. What it has meant though is we're not really going to do much on the build, but it is what it is. The business has got to come first. We've got to sell product to pay for the build. Ooh, it's coming down hard now. So yeah, this is our crushed hardcore product. A nice 40 mil down, which is perfect for recycled aggregate. Our conveyor, albeit it's been patched up, is working and doing its job. It's exactly what I wanted it to do. When I bought this off eBay, I bought it for Dave, um, it said it's not working, it's not running, but it actually runs. It needs some TLC though, we're going to do it when we've got time. We've ordered two brand new rams for it. At the moment, Dale's tacked some uh, steel to hold it up out the way, but we've ordered two new rams, which means we can change the height and the pitch so we can adjust it to the stockpile. But yeah, this machine now, this setup needs to be running literally all day, every day to keep up with demand. But yeah, if you remember in Sunday's episode, we were finishing off this wall and this was the road through into what will be the new section of our yard. This is going to be our processing part. And actually this pile has gone right down. It's mega. But yeah, so far, so good. So, we've had to bring in another operator, as I've said, because we want to get this pile gone, processed and gone as fast as we can. We reckon it was about three, 350 tonnes there. So, we've made a good chunk actually in a couple of days, but this has been a godsend. What a piece of kit. It's an absolute beast. It basically is perfect for what we're doing. We'll load in the pile, whatever's there, and then you're getting three products off of it which we can either sell as they are or crush down or reprocess that a little bit more to make them into a really good recycle quality product and I've had loads of interest already so yeah there's a lot to do and it's messy it's muddy and it's hard in this weather it's not ideal but if we have more days like we've got today with the whole team here working like a well-oiled machine we'll be through this pile in no time don't forget, we're also a construction company and a property development company. And over at Project Woodlands in Liverpool, Alex, this is the bit where Alex gets a little bit tense. It's basically getting the properties on the market, getting them filled, and then getting the tenants moved in. And Project Woodlands is finally at a point where this one now can be tenanted. And this is where Alex really comes into his own. So over to Alex, let's have a look. So today we're on Woodlands Road, which is the one where we had the gas problems, which I say it's raining, so it's horrible weather today. But the tenants are moving in tomorrow on the middle floor flat. You'll see on our little sign in a minute where it says let by. So literally it was on the market for a couple of days, had loads of inquiries and it went straight away. So we've picked a nice couple to go in there, which is always good to have the pick of the bunch. So they're moving in tomorrow, which is good. The top floor is getting all the finishing dressings done, which I'll, I'll be able to show you that as well, but we'll go inside and get out the rain. So on this one, I keep calling it a flat as well, but it's actually a masonette because it's got its own front door off the street, straight in and then up, you're up, upstairs. So it's got your own entrance hall, your own entrance door, 
and you're basically self-contained you're not sharing any part of what you're renting out so it's actually a masonette which i've been corrected on so you've seen this one obviously a couple of times it's just been having a little final clean down but the main thing we're looking at is the gas so the gas originally now you'd be thinking look what we've had to do there the monstrosity which is annoying the boxing that we made look where they put the meter so the the main incumbents coming through the wall there and then the meters had to go there and we had a nice little box that made and all that which we're gonna to have to try and cut round now but as i say the tenants are moving in tomorrow so it's gonna be sure for time and that'll be able to get fit back better but the gas itself used to be inside there in the corner where all the electric meters and all the everything else is but we've had to put it there luckily enough the fridge is there to hide it but still not ideal to be honest but the gas is on it's the main thing anyway so the gas has been on tested building it's all signed off and we're all good to go and as i say the tenants are moving in tomorrow so the ground floor shop this first floor done rented money coming in which is good uh going to all to our finance but upstairs as i say niall behind the camera has been getting his finishing shots we've been up there doing other finishing bits as well behind them christian's lads have been there with himself just getting a few bits that i've noticed to get ready and finished just for the photos and because they need doing anyway um but yeah upstairs is good so let's go and have a look we're in the top floor hmo flat for those of you who don't know this is the four bed ensuite hmo house share type thing so it was originally a three bedroom flat we went up into the loft to make a fourth bedroom and then we make it into a house share so a small hmo here so as i say the flat below three bedroom flat this one four bedroom house share so you'll see all the dressings in now again not too much just enough for the photos little bits of rugs and stuff cushions just for decoration ornaments <coughs> the gas meter is in here but christian's glued the door on because the door keeps coming off so he needs to fix it but for the photos he glued he glued it on so i was standing up and it's look i'm gonna get him to open it in a minute for him because he's still here uh, but yeah looking around look good all clean down all nice for the photos and we're not going to show you too much i'll show you this communal area and i'll show you one of the bedrooms dressed up but you're not going to see anything else because i'm going to save it all for the finished show reel that you'll see you might remember me saying about the i'm going to swear i'm going to say the mess up but i want to say something else this come white should be black now i don't know why it happened we ordered black by the time it, I come here to see what had happened, it was already too late we'd had it for longer than what the returns were. So we've had to keep it. But as I say, normally it would be black to match in with the units. So I'm going to have to just live with it. On the photos, I'm going to look at the photos every time I see them and think of what happened there. I'll do me head in like I do with a couple of other things, especially when you see around the sockets and the switches in here. Same things happen. Some of the socket and socket switches aren't as clean as what I'd like them in terms of the paintwork around them when the light shines on them but Niall might do some magic and edit it for us so yeah white but as I say this is for four people so there's only one oven one four ring hob because you only need up to five people you only need one set of cooking facilities that's where you'll see on our other HMOs we'll have two ovens and a five ring hob uh, but on this one we'll just do one and four uh, dishwasher the standard we always put dishwashers in uh, and again the kitchen spec is the same as what we've been rolling out the color scheme in here is the same as what we did on another project on Egbeth road where we've done the skirt a bit of a greenier color the walls are the same color as what you've seen on project albert but we've done the skirt and doors the same on that one the floor pick the floor of a photo not really into it to be honest with you but it goes well with the area and the type of tenants who are going to be moving into it because it's not students it's just professionals and the professional tenants that live in this area are a bit quirky anyway so this sort of style as you see it it's more suited to them to be fair i'm a little bit not into it but it's down and we can't change it so just don't, don't damage it mate don't damage it see why did you like there's where now i was gonna start playing that clown song now how <laughs> can you glue it so much? I'm using a posi there. No flathead now. Flathead, I think the flathead better now. Is this, was this a flathead, yeah? Maybe just a knife. 
Not to be pink, this mate. What glue is it? Might a bond. You know. You got your paintbrush out? You'll take your sandpaper out now, aren't you? So, what we wanted to show you was the new gas meter again so you'll see the new pipe coming all the way in from outside and you'll see the existing one which is literally right next to it there uh, so all that messing around when the pipe was already in but me and Christine have had constant battles with them to try and get it sorted but at least it's done and what was funny as well he phoned me after it was done and said we're going to complete a survey and how satisfied was I with the service and then I went on to say I'm not satisfied and I explained all the stuff that's gone on and then he went we're going to open an investigation and have a look into it now so I thought come on then crack, crack on so this is what we do when we come to dress our rooms so my missus Ray she's the one who does all this all these cushions and that they're from our house throws from our house pillars from our house ornaments from ours uh, bits from Ray's mums as well she gives us some bits of items teddies and that the stuff that we've collected over the years for dressings and as I say in our loft at home we've got bags of stuff that we've just bought and collected that we use and pick from and come up with different ideas and every year we try and mix it up or Ray tries to mix it up and even here today she was trying to do a few things differently than normal but this is our sort of standard thing we go for we always go for a teddy go for nice big dressy cushions and it's just so that when these photos go online on Lightmove or Spare Room which is what these will be pushed on for single individuals the, the idea is to just get the room looking as a best finished product as we can so when we're trying to sell that room it looks good so straight away when people see that advert it stands out from the rest that are on there so if you were to go on right move yourself and have a look at what's to rent and look on spare room you'll see other people have had a go at dressing their stuff but we try and do as best we can so that when people do look they'll click on us and they'll want to book a viewing straight away when you come to see the rooms obviously all this won't be here it'd be good if you could keep it yet but we just don't it's just literally for the photos so they'll come see an empty bare room and then it's up to them to put their own spin on it. They can look at the photos and try and copy it if they want, but nine times out of ten, they, do, they don't. But in this one, this is the one that's got no ensuite. The other three rooms have got an ensuite. The top floor one's got its own kitchenette with like a microwave and stuff, its own fridge, because there's space up there to do it. This actual room has got an off suite, so the bathroom for this room is directly behind, which I'll show you in a second. It's got its own lock on the door, so only this room can do it. So the same key that they use to get in their door is the same key that they use for their bathroom. So they can keep it locked if they don't want no one else in the house to use it. And it's perfectly just for them. They may have to make a dash sometimes when they're getting changed or using it, but their actual off-suite bathroom is much larger than all the other on suites. So yeah, much more sizable. So as I say, this is the off-suite for that bedroom, which is bedroom number three, nice big quadrant shower, 900 by 900. Normally we'll put like an 8 by 8 in, square, whereas this one's a little bit bigger. Uh, but loads of space, nice vanity unit for them as well. Again, a little bit more upmarket compared to the ensuite ones. Again, trying to sell the room a bit more, nice sink. Obviously the mirrors that we always put in, two plus chargers, put in all our bathrooms now. Uh, we used to put shaving points in, but who uses a shaver these days? Everything's charged up with a normal plug anyway. Um, and it's all, you know, cordless. So we started putting toothbrush charges instead. And when you go and do inspections on all our other HMOs, when the tenants are in there, you'll see a lot of people do use them. Probably about 80, 90% of the people do actually use them. So they're a good thing them. So I advise anyone to have a little go with that. They're about 50, 60 quid to buy. But the way of it, because you haven't got leads trailing everywhere, and it's another selling point again, future proof in the building. Uh, tiles, nice big tiles that we always use, going for the black as always. The room's still good, nice spacious room. This is about 13 square metres all in all. Uh, and as I say, there's a few things you may notice on the finished video. Radiators, we kept all the original radiators because we didn't put no new central heating system in. The existing one stayed in. We changed the boiler because we put a new invented cylinder in, so we took the combi out and we put a uh, system boiler in. But we kept all the rats, all the pipe work, all stayed in, again, to save a bit of coin. And the actual skirt and arcs and stuff, it was all existing, didn't touch it. We skimmed the whole building because we had to. But the actual skirt and arcs and stuff, we had stayed. We put a, new, a couple of new ones here and there, even the doors. We don't pick them doors. All the existing doors stayed on. Same hinges, same handles, same everything. Uh, so we were just trying to keep the cost down as much as possible on this flat up here. So as I say, on this one, 
um, you're going to see the finished shot on this once Niall's done it. She's looking at me now, probably thinking, when am I going to do it? So once he's got the video put together, we'll do another little bit of an intro and we'll show you case that to you. So, but for now, I'm going to hand you back over to Manchester and Chris will take it from here. The way this is going with this rain, probably going to owe Hollywood a new camera. I've already broken one of his GoPros. So yeah, I showed you in Sunday's episode and I also showed the drawings. This is going to be the corner of our new front element of the yard and what we've decided is this bit is going to be the more customer cleaner area so we're going to have a site office here which is where i'll be based but we'll also deal with payments and inwards and outwards uh, deliveries etc over the other side here we're going to have a crew area where the lads are going to be able to come in nice dry environment uh, where they can get clean probably put a shower block in there as well toilets etc what we're going to have to do is get power to this part of the yard because there's not much power, there's a little bit there I've noticed but that's got to be thought about. And then we've got a big bean can, it's like a workshop which is going to run from the end here, it's like 20 minutes metres long which will take two or three trucks, that's going to be Dale's workshop. And then we're going to have parking facilities here for customers and the lads and then over there is going to be more containers for storage where we're going to keep a lot of the plant. And then that middle bit is going to be the aggregates yard where all the aggregates are going to be stored and then obviously the backyard where the screener is is going to be where all the processing takes place so each section of the yard should have its own function but it feels like tiny on paper when you try and design it on paper when you're here it feels massive it feels like we have lots of space but like with any yard you always find that you've not got enough space there's always something to put somewhere but yeah it's so exciting honestly i had the worst night's sleep last night but it's because my mind's just working overdrive but in a good way honestly i didn't get to bed till about half two and that's a problem for me because if i'm thinking about work or trying to sort through a problem or something's on my mind i literally cannot sleep so I wake up absolutely shattered in the mornings, which is not great really, because then I'm a bit good for nothing today. I tried to do some work this morning and I was struggling a little bit. I just didn't have the energy or the focus, but I've come down here because I love it and I can try and be of some use. But yeah, this is definitely the downside of my ADHD, ADHD brain is my mind's just working overtime with ideas and excitement and stuff, but it's a good problem to have. But I need to make sure that I can still function at the daytime because I've got a day job and things like this can become distractions for your main job like when you change a direct unit's business premises or when you buy a new bit of kit or something like that or you've got a big problem it can take you away from what is actually your day job which actually is earning you money this won't earn us money for a long time i mean when it does it will hopefully earn us a lot of money and it's a great investment in the future but for right now it's not what's going to pay the bills it's uh, it's almost like a bit of a vanity project but very noisy every time i hear a bang or something i always think what's that because obviously i'm very health and safety conscious really like i really want to make sure we tighten up on that so i've hired an external cdm company to come and visit us and tell us what we need to do so that's happening i want to do this right i don't want to cut any corners but there's so much i need to do and also i'm putting it out there on youtube which is probably not it's gonna you know it's gonna attract some feedback that might not be that helpful but up so far most of the people watching have been so positive and I'm glad because, you know, we're risking a lot to do this. We're putting a lot on the line. We don't need to do this. We've got a good other set of businesses, but this is an investment in, in the future. I genuinely believe in having like a diversified business portfolio. I believe in recycling and I love machinery. So yeah, but just to get to this point now, I remember I did a video where I said we spent 1.2 million. I suppose that includes all the vans and stuff, but I reckon just that yard now with what we've committed to spend wise, definitely 500, 600 grand over the next few years. Yeah, I know I always keep banging on about how much, how happy this makes me, but it, it does like, you know, if you have an idea that you know nothing about, it's almost like in an industry I don't even deserve to be in because I don't have the contact, I don't have the knowledge, but then to see finally all this come together with like a, a well-oiled machine, everyone knowing what they're doing and then turning a product that was waste that people have been paid to take away or paid to get rid of into a usable product that we can now sell. 
I, I, it's going to be something I'm going to put a lot of weight behind because I genuinely believe in it. I genuinely believe in it. I'm on pins in here. But yeah, it's um, so exciting. And um, there's not much build going on, like I said before. I thought it would be a bit more putting the yard together action, but really today, it's just about operating the yard and learning the best way to do it. You know, we've had to take on more staff, up our insurances, get fuel delivered. We've got a fuel bowser now. Literally, me and Alex were working out the figures last night because we want to try and work out what this yard costs us to run per hour. And we are spending a lot of money every month on it. Servicing finance on the trucks and the whole running, but just feel like the stars have aligned for us here. I wish it was a bit a bit more summer left so we could try and make hay while the sun's shining, but we don't really have a summer anyway, so I think this will give us the time to perfect everything, get everything set up for next summer and we'll hit it hard, but we're trying to make connections with utility companies, civil companies, people that need aggregates and muck away the all year round. So hopefully this yard will more than pay for itself. I love it. Anyway, I need to get dry because I and Hollywood, who literally is from Hollywood, are getting drenched. I'm absolutely buzzing with how this yard is progressing. It's definitely a little bit of a guilty pleasure. However, it's great to see everyone so infused about it. The dig is obsessed. He worked about eight o'clock on Friday night, which is amazing for people to be putting in that much effort. It's because we all believe in what we're doing here now, but we're not going to neglect the rest of the business. Alex is absolutely stacked over in Liverpool. Preferred joinery is going so well. It's amazing. We're doing loads of work on the website and that. We're going to be launching our new website really soon there. And the construction side is really busy. We've got big jobs starting, a nice pipeline. I don't know what the economy is going to do because as I've been talking to you now, something's been announced by uh, the government talking about painful budgets and stuff like that, which worries me because I don't want sentiment to slow down. I want us to feel like, yes, we can spend money again. Interest rates are going down, but it's good. I'm going to head back to the dry of the office HQ for a bit. But yeah, hope you're liking this yard content, guys. I really want to show you this development, this whole build side, but I promise we won't neglect the other stuff with what we do. But yeah, might see you at HQ. I am drenched, but I do not care. I love being in and around that yard. I love plant, I love machines, I love aggregates, I love mud, I love everything. I love the dig, I love it, honestly. And I'm banging on the Mac a broken record, but I love it, yeah. But I've not really done anything sort of intimate and I, I feel like I need to do it now. It's like therapy, but I hope you had a nice bank holiday weekend, guys. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode get used to yard activity because there's going to be quite a bit i know people say about uh we don't work in a bank all day don't have days off because we don't work in a bank but it's not realistic that when you've got kids is it we went to uh langdugno in wales actually it was really nice uh, i love a pier i love uh, i love history and i was getting a bit geeky and all the victorian 
things and the pair and that it was good but it was nice spent time with my kids and did all that so yeah back at it but i was excited i had butterflies in my stomach and as i said before i just couldn't sleep last night because i'm so focused and fired up for this yard and what we can the opportunity we've got here i feel like i'm building a brand new business and what i love about it is that i feel like i'm documenting the whole thing so win or fail succeed or fail i'm going to be able to look back in years to come and sort of reminisce about the journey which in a way i wish i could have done with my earlier time in business because I've got fond memories, but there was highs and lows and so many painful moments, but also so many laughs and just amazing people on the way. So yeah, it's great to document it, but yeah. Hope you've enjoyed this episode, guys. Come back on Sunday for all sorts. Big push, final push on Project 849 now. The pressure is really on. That's keeping me awake a little bit as well. Um, but I trust in the boys we've got plans for everything Charlotte the project manager is well on a game which is good although she's off for the rest of the week um, but obviously there'll be lots more yard activity we've got to get this fence up permit fence it, we put the temporary fence up and it blew down but we need to do that to secure everything um, and um, yeah we need to just add another order come in there 32 tonnes of recycled so we need to get on our game and get processing some of that but yeah come back on Sunday guys let me know what you think about this episode hope you like it it's good to have Hollywood back but also still enjoying doing this personal stuff I'm gonna be doing a lot more of it and also trying to get rid of this double chin one way or the other see you Sunday